in the 15th Marvel film this year, there Guardians. There hasn't been 15 Marvel movies this year. Prove it. I actually can't. In the 26th Marvel film this year, Guardians of the Galaxy, a large Smurf-like character has a Mighty Morphin Power Ranger arm that can transform. She's not a Smurf. Beast from the X-Men? No. Mystique? Still no. Salty the Singing Songbook? God, that's a reference. Childhood trauma. Anyway, we made this. And this was done in Blender, a completely free program, so you know, no excuses. And since we will be putting something on our character's arm, we wanted to place tracking markers all over the area that we are looking to replace, similar to how we did the giant laser gun effect a few years back. So we grabbed a tight-fitting black glove and green fabric paint and painted dots all over the glove. So now, as we shoot, we have these green dots standing out really well against the black background so we can track it later on. We also set up my iPhone to shoot a wider shot as a witness camera so that Mattis had more reference for the full movement since our main shot doesn't show his arm for a lot of the move. Then of course we jump around to the other side to get this shot and we were set for post. Before getting into the actual tracking process, it helps to bump up the exposure and contrast to make our tracking markers more visible. It looks bad, but it's just for tracking purposes. In Cinema 4D, you can do this right inside the tracker. With Blender, I'll do this in After Effects or Premiere first using curves. Then we're gonna send our adjusted scene to Blender and get our track. It's also a good idea to have slightly higher shutter speeds with tracks like this to avoid any motion blur that could confuse the track. But even with all of that, you'll usually have a little manual corrections you'll need to make regardless. So we'll open up Movie Clip Editor in Blender, load in our footage, click Prefetch to cache in our footage for smoother playback, and set scene frames to automatically set our scene frames to the frames of the imported clip. Then set the scene frame rate the same as the imported clip, same with the resolution in Output Properties. Now back in Movie Clip Editor, click on the Track tab on the right side and under Objects, click the plus button to create a new tracking object for Josh's hand, and we'll name our object blaster. And now we need to create tracking markers. We can do this by pressing control and left clicking on the areas where the green tracking markers are most visible. To increase the tracking marker size, press S to scale it up a bit. For a successful solve, Blender needs at least eight working tracking markers. So once we select those eight markers, we head to the track drop down menu and click this arrow button to track our footage. If we were successful with our selection of markers, we get a nice track without anything getting lost. If some of the tracking markers do get lost, we can go to the exact frame they get lost, readjust them by pressing G and moving them back, then deselect all the other markers and track the adjusted one again. If markers are getting lost constantly, try setting it to fast motion in the tracking settings drop down menu. Now with all of our markers tracked, we'll set the lens that we use to shoot the scene. In this case, we do know our lens, so we're going to set it there. If you're not sure which lens that you used for the shot, try ticking focal length in the solve tab under refine option. But now with our lens correctly set, we press the solve camera motion button in the solve tab. If everything went right, which most of the time it won't, we get a nice pixel error smaller than one. Everything below one is basically a solid track. If not, we can try to refine our track by setting the previously mentioned focal length so that the solver calculates it automatically for you. The estimation might not be accurate all the time though, or we can play with keyframe A and keyframe B, which are basically a range of frames where you think most of the track markers held up pretty well without any of them getting lost. Then Blender Solver will calculate a track based on these keyframes. Hello, Joshua. Hello, website. You can call me audio. Okay. I know why you're here. I need music. But it's so hard to find music you need, isn't it? It's so hard. I know, but you're safe with me. I'm the most affordable music licensing there is from real artists that don't sound like stock music. Tell me more. My Audio Pro plan is the best value for your money. This is an annual subscription that gives you unlimited download access to our full catalog of music and sound effects. Where have you been all my life? I was thinking the same thing. And right now, I'm offering 70% off my Audio Pro plan, making it only $59.70 for a whole year. I think I love you. <gasps> Gasp! Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to come on too strong. It's just, I've never met a subscription like you before. No. Don't apologize. I... 
I feel the same way. Really? If I'm not being too forward, you could get my lifetime subscription. Do you mean like forever? Forever. Unlimited downloads for life. It covers YouTube monetizations, other social media content, short films, podcasts, and more. Are you saying what I think you're saying? Normally it's $4.99, but for you, my love, if you use the coupon code FILMRAT, you can get it for only $1.99, and we can spend the rest of our lives together. I will. I will spend my life with you. With our track done, we head back to the 3D view port and here we create our main camera, set its background to be the raw footage that we just tracked. And we can use this footage overlay to recreate a low poly 3D scene of the same size. We'll use this low poly human model as a reference where Josh would stand in the 3D space of our scene. And once we have the camera angle and simple low poly recreation of the scene done, we can reproject the raw footage clean plate onto the geometry. We're doing this so our CG blaster model will get almost exactly exact light bounce and reflection that it would if this was done in the real world. This technique combined from a correct HDRI from the place you actually shot, which to be honest, we forgot to get, can yield the best results and less color matching work later on. We did get an HDRI from that area on another day, but it wasn't the exact lighting, but... <laughs> We've also created the sun lamp to give more light to the scene and set its angle value to around 50 degrees, which gives us soft shadows like we have in the actual scene. Now create a simple dummy object that will act as a temporary placeholder for our final blaster model. Select the dummy object, then go to the object constraint properties and in the drop down menu, select object solver. Now in the object solver settings, set the object property to be our blaster object and camera to be the main scene camera we've just created. We do need to adjust the dummy object because by default it might not be in the right location. So enable tracking markers under viewport overlays, tick motion tracking. And now with little adjustments, we have a 3D dummy object that is following the same movement as Josh's hands based on the track that we've made. The creation of the blaster was pretty easy. We took advantage of curves and curve modifier. We started by looking at a few references for Dr. Manhattan's actual blaster from God, the movie. Right, it's and not Dr. Manhattan. Uh, Genie from Aladdin. Ryan. Sonic the Hedgehog. You're doing this on purpose. It's a mastermind? Ryan. Okay. Natiri. Can you just say the right name so that we can- and now we've created very simple metal plating geometry. And that was it. The rest was just repeating that plating using an array modifier combined with a curve modifier along all the curves. And the curve shapes were according to the actual nebula blast. Thank you. What? You said it. Said what? The name. Of the character? Yes. Oh, Yondu. At least that's from the same movie. Um, I don't know. We've used two circles here, one on the very end and one on the start of the blaster, and the rest were basic curves with a slight offset at their end to create a slight bend on the body. Then it was a matter of creating more inner curve circles, changing the shape of the plating and array along those circle curves. We also used our energy assets for the blast and overlaid them a few times to create some energy and heat effects on the front of the blaster. The actual transformation animation was done with shape keys or blend shapes. Each 
curve that was shaping the blaster body has its own shape key and twitch and scale animation. The end and start circles only had scale animation shape keys. The front inner circles were attached to the empty objects, which would scale from zero to one and had Y location keyframes to mimic like it was coming out of the elbow area. We also use this low poly hand with sci-fi metal material at the beginning, applied a simple rig to it and basic finger animation. This hand would then scale down to zero and all the other elements would come out of it. After that, we layered a bunch of our energy assets as image planes with transparency. Links in the notes below for those if you wanna grab some of these delicious visual effects assets of magical goodness. Once our model of the blaster is finished, we just copy it over to our track scene with the blaster dummy object, scale it up so it matches the scale from the one in the actual film, and parent it under our dummy object by selecting our main blaster model and then the dummy object by pressing Control P and clicking on the object button to parent it under the dummy. Then we set up the compositor in Blender to render a few different layer passes, which we would then comp together in After Effects. Everything was rendered to a PNG sequence, then after importing in After Effects, we do need to correct the sequence frame rate. So right click on the sequence and select interpret footage where we can correct the frame rate. After that, we pulled our layers into the comp over the footage and did simple color corrections and touch ups using lumetri color, brightness, saturation, and chromatic aberration. But that's it. We now have replicated the blaster from a violent member of the Blue Man group. Oh my and God, can. Ryan, just say the right name. What, what, are you just trying to make me mad? Are you trying to get me boiled up? Because it's working. The blood is boiling, Ryan! And that's it for today. Links to all the things in the notes below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button so you're notified when we put up new episodes. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. A fiery display was seen in the skies above northern Texas today as the first autonomous flight was shot down. The flight, which was carrying no passengers, was on its way from Dallas to New York City when it was struck by an unidentified weapon. The plane crashed in a field outside of Dallas and there were no sustained injuries. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack, but this is clearly an anti-AI resistance. And you can rest assured that these villains will be brought to swift and brutal justice. What's an autonomous? I think it's like a really fast car.